What's going on and welcome on into the TC Trading Channel. Today we are talking about a very timely indicator that can be very useful in your own trading and or investing in the stock market. Now this indicator, while timely right now, some who are watching this video at the moment may not realize its true value and that's what you want to try to at least demonstrate here in this video. So we are looking at the TradingView platform right now. We are looking at SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. And first things first, this is TradingView. This indicator is found on TradingView's platform. We're gonna show you exactly how to pull it up, how to load it, and then how to use it and potentially interpret it in your own trading and investing. But if you don't have TradingView, there'll be a link down below this video to sign up. We use the premium version, but there's many versions out there that you can choose from. We also have a link down below to Lux Algo. So if you want to check out Lux Algo and get some of the best custom and premium indicators on the market, Lux Algo will be the best place to do so. The best in the game when it comes to customizing and handpicking some of the coolest indicators you're going to find. Okay, so now we are looking at TradingView. We're gonna pull up an indicator that you don't have to pay for. It's gonna be on the platform. So pull up SPY, pull up any stock of your choice. And this is going to be an indicator under the technical section right here. Scroll on down. It is going to be the choppiness index. Now really quick, I wanna pull this up for a second. I'm not gonna read this off to you. You can do it on your own time. Essentially, this indicator is going to be telling us if we are in a trending market or if we are in a choppy market, okay? Why is that important? If we are in a trending market, then breakouts, breakdowns may be more likely. If we are in a choppy market, well, support buys and maybe resistance sells may be a better opportunity or a better strategy, right? We'll have a lot more bounciness at support, at resistance rejections, things like that. And so those breakouts and breakdowns are maybe less likely. And so you can build trading strategies based off of something that you're noticing with an indicator like the choppiness index, okay? So in a nutshell, that's what you need to know. Now, how to pull it up. So we go to indicators, top of the screen here, go to technicals, scroll down. You can just type in choppiness, but I'm going to pull up or scroll down to see. We have choppiness index, not the chop zone. It's actually the choppiness index that we're going to be using in this video. Once I load that on the bottom of our screen, we are going to see this bar, okay? So it's kind of like an RSI almost in a sense where if you're above the range, the highlighted range, then you are dealing with very choppy conditions. And if you're below the range, you're dealing with a trending market and more trending conditions, okay? Now I have the ability to decrease or collapse the panel I have the ability to open it back up. This arrow right here will move it to the top if I want to have it on the top of my screen. It just depends on what you know is comfortable for you, okay? I can also maximize it, so I'm only looking at the choppiness index if I want to do that and so forth. I like on the bottom of my screen, kind of like an RSI almost in a sense. And what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to pull up the settings of this indicator. Now, I will click on the indicator, click on the line that it creates, and I can now click on control click on that line. And then I'm gonna pull up the settings panel, the settings window, click on settings. Now you have settings, chop inputs. So we've got chart, okay? I am not going to set this for a specific time frame, although you could do that, okay? And this is an idea that you can play off of and mess around with only looking at, you know, a five minute chart or, you know, one hour charts or one day charts. We're looking at a one day chart here on the S&P 500. You might find that you're a active day trader and so you want to look at, you know, a one hour chart or a five minute chart, you know, and that's, that's where the choppiness indicator gives you the best edge in identifying these conditions. The length is set to 14, offset is set to zero. That's the standard defaults. If you go to style, what you'll see is now you can customize the colors and all that great stuff of the indicator, labels and whatnot. The 61.8 is the upper band. So technically speaking, we have that, or that's the default setting for the high end of the choppiness index, meaning that choppy conditions exist if we see the indicator above that level. And then we have 38.2 as the lower band, indicating that trending conditions really exist, or strong trending conditions exist here if that's our level. So 
I was just messing with the numbers here, but you can kind of mess with that and, and re reset to default and, and all that great stuff. 38.2 is the number. Okay, visibility. I can only show this indicator on certain time frames. So as I zoom out on different time frames, I will not see it and so forth. I can change that there. Okay, so let's look at the practicality because it's not useful to look at this indicator and say, okay, we are up here towards you know the high end or right near that choppy condition kind of look back to look at this, this spike here what do we see right very choppy conditions right in here we're up there but does that mean that we should expect these conditions to continue well that's what we have right now based on the indicator but what's actually more important or more interesting is when we start to see the indicator roll over if this is what's going to occur what we now have a situation of is a prior choppy condition that is now trending towards more trending markets or more trending price action, which we can use that to our advantage. So just like let's say the MACD or even the RSI taking advantage of when we start to see that turn, because we know that this indicator doesn't tend to sit up here and, and flatline for you know a very, very long time, right? This tends to be you know an oscillating indicator where we go from trending to choppy to trending to choppy back and forth, back and forth. And we are looking right now over the past, let's say six months or so. And you'll notice that over the past six months, we have had multiple times where we were in, technically speaking by the indicator standards, very trending markets. We have had multiple times where we have been, or at least two specific times. And a lot of times we got very, very close to the upper band of the indicator. Multiple times here that we've seen the indicator get up towards very choppy conditions, right? So you'll notice that this has been a really interesting indicator to look at and that in this past six month span, we have had plenty of different conditions at different times. So it's a great indicator to keep on the back burner and to look for when we start to roll over from some of the peaks and we start to recover from some of those troughs as a shift in current market conditions may be setting up right in front of you, which then you can confirm with your own noticing of price action and let's say your own charts and stocks that you could be watching. This could work with stocks, it could work with futures, it could work with commodities, it could work with cryptos. I like to use this on the S&P 500, and then the stocks that I like to trade are more so some of those large cap companies that have the biggest market caps. And so I'm seeing right now that we have been in a period where it's been very difficult to see those breakouts pan out. We've had a lot of false breakouts up and down over the past, more so to the upside over the past couple of weeks, and why is that the case? If I look at the choppiness indicator, it was telling me all along that we've been rallying very, very nicely, really ever since the month of April has begun. So in my example, that's something that I need to pay close attention to and why I like to use the choppiness indicator to guide me on this time frame or to guide me in my own trading. And of course, you can use it on any time frame. If I want to go to the five minute chart, it's the same deal, right? You're going to see a lot more oscillation here. That's for sure but on different time frames, it will work just the same. Just understand that when you're noticing certain things happening, and let's say we have now you know, made a potential bounce off of what was trending or closer to trending, and we start rallying up. Now, what that tells me is that in this next span of time, for example, there's about an hour and a half till the market closes. Should I expect a breakout now? Should I expect the S&P to break this high and rally, it could happen, right? But based off what this indicator is telling me, the chances might be a little bit less likely. And so my edge may not be as strong, which then maybe makes me size down. If I like the setup still on the chart, I will size down potentially, or I can build a strategy off of this to just maybe not even take this trade and save my, my mental energy, save my money for something that fits my criteria a bit better after maybe some further back testing. So there you guys have it. That is the choppiness indicator here on TradingView. I hope this one helps you guys out. Hopefully this is something that you can use in your own trading and investing. I know I personally am. Again, those links to TradingView and Lux Algo down below. If you want more access to premium indicators that not everybody has access to, Lux Algo would be a great resource for you. Thanks so much and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.